Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to all of you to the Lord's house tonight for this, our special Thanksgiving worship service. Of course, it's obvious why we come together tonight as uh, our nation pauses tomorrow to, to observe this thing called Thanksgiving. We understand as God's people that Thanksgiving is not just some non-directed feeling that a person feels sort of, sort of thankful about things. As God's people, we, we gather together to praise God from whom all our blessings flow. And that's why we come together tonight in God's house to thank our God as we celebrate Thanksgiving. The order of service that we're going to follow tonight is printed for you in your worship folder. And so to begin our service tonight, we will sing one of those beloved Thanksgiving hymns, hymn 610, Now Thank We All Our God. Please rise. Again, I would direct your attention to your worship folder where we follow the order of service as it's printed there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. Beloved in the Lord, our God is gracious and generous. He withholds no good thing his children need. For that we will be eternally grateful. Yet because of our sinful flesh, 
we often slip into discontent and ingratitude. Therefore, in a spirit of humble penitence, confess your sins to God and ask again for his greatest gift and blessing, forgiveness. Penitent children of God, rejoice and be glad. God made Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You are forgiven and at peace with God. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new each day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We listen now to the Word of God appointed for the observance of a Thanksgiving celebration. To do so, we first of all look back in our Bibles to the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. And here God's people, the Israelites, are, are standing at the border. They're standing at the border of the Promised Land. And, and as they do that, before they enter the Promised Land, and they're just coming off of 40 years wandering in the wilderness, Moses sort of reminds them of the blessings that God has given to them. And it's a neat thing that he does, because he sort of has them look back on 40 years of blessing. He has them sort of look across the border at the blessings that wait for them. And then he, then he encourages them that when they enjoy God's blessings, not, not to become complacent and, and to forget, to always thank God for giving us those blessings. Moses said this to the children of God, be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during those forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and revering him. 
For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. We'll join now in singing in unison the psalm of the day, Psalm 150, a beautiful psalm of praise that's found on page 122 in the front of the hymnal. Our second lesson this evening is from Philippians chapter 4. Gratitude doesn't come easy to a heart that is discontent. And that's why it's very important to cultivate a spirit of contentness with the blessings that God has given to us. The Apostle Paul here writes about how he has, he has learned the secret of being content, and it sort of is a lesson that is learned, isn't it? Paul learned that he could always be content because he can do anything through God who gives him strength. And that's what he writes about in this lesson. Paul writes, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet, it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. 
I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God, and my God will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of our Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Alleluia. Please rise out of respect for the Holy Gospel. The Gospel for this evening and also our sermon text for the night is from Luke chapter 17, beginning there at verse 11. It is the story of ten lepers who are healed of their leprosy, and one of them returns to say thank you to Jesus. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. We'll continue our service now with the hymn, We Praise You, O God, Our Redeemer, hymn 609. Please rise. <clears throat> praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. The portion of God's word that is the basis of our sermon this evening, this Thanksgiving Eve, I suppose we could call it, is the gospel lesson, as we announced a few moments ago from Luke chapter 17, beginning there at verse 11. 
And since we've heard that already at this point in time, I would simply invite you to bow your heads, join your heart with mine as we offer this prayer. Lord, be gracious unto us and bless your word among us. Amen. You may be seated. In the name of and to the eternal glory of our Savior Jesus, dear fellow redeemed and grateful people of God. Thanksgiving is for many people one of those holidays that brings with it a lot of special memories. Maybe you have special memories of Thanksgivings of years ago. Maybe it's because there are a lot of special things at Thanksgiving. Maybe it's the, the, special, the special trip that you make at Thanksgiving to go to so-and-so's house. Maybe it's the special guests that come to your house for Thanksgiving. There's the special tastes and the special smells of Thanksgiving. There's the special football games on Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving is just one of those holidays that has a lot of special memories for people. I remember when I was a kid growing up and Thanksgiving was always at Grandma and Grandpa's house in Milwaukee. My grandpa was a preacher there and, and the family would get together and we would gather around the big table in their tiny dining room and we would all sit there and we kids would be kind of bored because my grandpa was a preacher and my uncle was a preacher and my dad was a teacher and they would sit and they would talk sin and business and we kids would sort of yawn. But then we would get to a point after the last piece of pie was eaten and grandpa, who was kind of the patriarch, you know, um, grandpa would say something like this. He would say, well, let's return thanks now. And as a little kid, whenever I heard my grandpa say that, that always struck me as odd. Because that's not the way we talked at our house. My dad said, let's give thanks. But grandpa said, let's return thanks. And so I puzzled about that as a little kid. I thought, well, which is right? Which do you say? Do we give thanks or do we return thanks? I suppose it's not a major point, is it? And there's no right or wrong answer in all of this, but since it is Thanksgiving, I suppose in the spirit of being precise, we, we want to do our best to understand Thanksgiving, right? So what is it? Do you give thanks or do you return thanks? As we listen to this text for today, I suppose a case could be made that Thanksgiving, it's really a return, isn't it? It's, a, it's an about-face it's going back to the giver. It's going back to the source of blessing. And it's saying thank you. If we look at this leper in our text for tonight, we're going to see one who returns to say thank you. And so as we meditate upon this text, let us, let us learn the lesson of returning thanks. That one leper that we hear about in our text for tonight, he, he really had a reason to celebrate Thanksgiving in our text. If you just look at the day that he had, you know, his day started out and, and he probably didn't feel like he would have had much of a reason to give thanks when he woke up that day because I suspect his, his day probably began like, like many days before that. When he woke up that day, he, he didn't wake up in his nice warm bed in his home, surrounded by all of his loved ones. We know that that wasn't the case because this man had a sickness called leprosy. And when you had leprosy, you didn't get to live at home anymore. In fact, you had to move out of town. You weren't allowed to live with other folks. In fact, this guy was probably part of what was called a leper colony. He probably lived in a, in a colony of lepers. He probably woke up with a lot of people who were sick, just like he was. He didn't go to church or synagogue this day. He couldn't. He wasn't allowed to. Even if he wanted to, he couldn't have gone to church or he couldn't have gone to the temple. You see, because once again, when you had leprosy, you weren't, you weren't allowed to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath. You were cut off from that. You couldn't, you couldn't join the other happy worshipers, the pilgrims, traveling to the city of Jerusalem to celebrate the main festivals and feasts on the, on the religious calendar. You couldn't do that if you had leprosy. You were cut off. You were what was called ceremonially unclean. That means that you couldn't join with the other people in the religious ceremonies that were part of your faith as a Jew. You were cut off from that. You were cut off from just about everything. 
That's why you'll notice in our text that, that these lepers, the ten of them, they stand at a distance and talk to Jesus because lepers were not allowed to get close to other people. In fact, lepers were required, if other people were traveling down a road and they started to get too close to lepers, lepers were required to call out to them, unclean, unclean, stay away, don't get any closer. That's the way this guy's day had started. He was an unhealthy, unclean man. But his day was going to get better. Because on this day, Jesus travels the border region between Galilee, that was the, the northern region, and Samaria, that was the middle region of the land of, of Israel at that time. And Jesus is traveling in that, that border region, and this is where the, the, the ten lepers were. And on this day, again, they stand at a distance, they stand at a distance, don't they? But this time, as they see Jesus coming, they don't call out, unclean, stay away. They call out something different to Jesus. Did you hear what they said to Jesus? Jesus, Master, have pity on us. They wanted Jesus to look over at them, to see their condition, to look at their pitiful condition, and to help them. That's what a cry for mercy is. And Jesus looks, and he sees the ten lepers, and we're told that Jesus answers them back. And here's what Jesus shouts back to the ten lepers. He says, go, show yourselves to the priests. Seems like an odd thing to holler back to these lepers. But you may remember, again, that they were ceremonially unclean. They couldn't do their religious thing. They couldn't join with other worshipers at the synagogue, at the temple. They were unclean, and that's why it was required when a person thought that perhaps they were, they were cured of leprosy. Not many people ever got over it. But if a person thought they were cured of leprosy, they were required to go to a priest. And a priest would look them over, and then finally a priest would say, yep, you're healthy again. You are now clean again, and you can come to worship again. So Jesus tells them to go and show themselves to the priest. And then we are told, as they went, they were cleansed. Can you imagine what that must have looked like? As they turn and they start to walk away, and here they walk, and as they walk, their flesh, their wasting, diseased flesh, it, it, it grows healthy and pink and perfect. Must have been something else to, to, to see that. Well, we're told that the one man, the, the man of interest for us in our text for today, one of them, when he sees that his fingers, his hands, his arms, they're whole again, he returns. He returns to Jesus. And you heard how he returns. He returns. He's shouting once again, but this time again, it's not stay away. He returns. He's shouting praises to God. He gets down on his face by the feet of Jesus, and he thanks him, and he gives glory to God. But friends, this, this is what thanksgiving is, isn't it? It's an about face. It's going back to the one who gave you the gift. It is going back to the one who gave you the blessing. This man returned to the source, to the giver, to Jesus, to the Lord. Friends, that's what thanksgiving does. It turns it returns to the giver of all blessings. No matter what that blessing is in your life, if it is restored health like the leper in our text, if it is prolonged days of good health, maybe you're on a good streak right now, or maybe if you're in the leper colony right now, but God is giving you the strength to endure Thanksgiving returns to the giver, to the Lord, to the Lord who is merciful and powerful. And we call attention to those two qualities of our Lord, because those are really the two qualities that really come shining through in our text, aren't they? I mean, the lepers stood at a distance and they had cried out for mercy. They wanted Jesus to have a heart for them, to have compassion, and he did. But he also showed his power, didn't he? As he performs a miracle to heal them. Isn't that wonderful that Jesus is both merciful and powerful? That's a good combination. What if, what if he was only one or the other? What if Jesus was only merciful but not powerful? 
Then, then he might have called back to those lepers. He might have called back. I really feel bad for you guys. I'd love to help, but I can't. What if, what if the Lord was only powerful but not merciful? He might have hollered back to those guys, I could help you, but you're not that bad. He's not just one or the other. In this text we see mercy and we see power. Friends, every blessing in your life Every good and perfect gift that you have has come to you because God has combined his mercy and his power in just the right amounts of each and given you the blessings that are just right for you. Let us return thanks to the giver, to the merciful, powerful giver. And as we return thanks to him, let's, let's remember that the chief blessing for which we give thanks, it's, it's, it's not our health and it's not our stuff, is it? The chief blessing is the one that is referenced in the last verse of our text for tonight. You'll notice that, that when all was said and done, the final thing that Jesus says to this leper, he says, he says rise and go, your faith has saved you. And notice the word that he uses there. He uses the word saved. He's talking now about salvation. He's talking more, uh, talking about more than just the fact that the man was healthy again, that his skin looked normal again. He was talking to him about the greatest blessing of all, salvation. And he says, your faith has saved you. You know what this leper had? He had the greatest blessing of all, salvation through faith in Jesus. Friends, that is the greatest blessing of all. And that's the blessing that you enjoy too. Salvation through faith in Jesus. You know, God in the Old Testament, he used that sickness, leprosy, to to teach people kind of an object lesson about sin. You know, I told you before that a person with leprosy, they, they, they couldn't go to church, they couldn't go to synagogue, they couldn't go to the temple, they were, they were cut off. It, in a sense, it was like all fellowship was, was cut off. Well, God required that, not to be mean. God wasn't being a meanie by that, but he was, he was sort of using leprosy as an object lesson of what sin does to us. You see, we're all born with the leprosy of sin. We are sick, really, really sick by birth, with this leprosy of sin. And sin cuts us off from that fellowship with God. And there's nothing that we can do to fix our problem of leprosy. We, we can't do anything. We, we have no medicine to take care of sin. There's nothing that we can do. All that a person can do is to stand and to cry to Jesus, Jesus, Master, have pity. Have pity on me. And he does, because he's a merciful Savior, because he's got a big heart. And he does something that only his mercy and only his power could accomplish. Jesus works out the most merciful exchange ever. Jesus takes upon himself the leprosy of our sin, a full-blown case of sin. He takes it upon himself. And he says, as it were, to the Father, Father, deal with me according to their leprosy. And God does. He cuts off Jesus. That's why Jesus cries out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You talk about being in a leper colony. Jesus was separated from his Father because of our sin. That's what we deserve, but Jesus took it. And then the merciful, powerful Savior, he does something else. He he gives us his righteousness, his wholeness, his perfection. He says, as it were, to the Father, Father, deal with them on the basis of my righteousness. And the Father does. 
God looks you over the way a priest might have examined a person who came and said they were healed of leprosy. God looks you over and he says, he says, I declare you to be clean. For the sake of my son, I declare you to be clean. And my friends understand what that means. Fellowship with God is restored. You may worship your God. You may approach your God. You may live with your God forever in heaven. You are clean, my friends. That is the greatest blessing of all. Rise and go. Your faith has saved you. There, there is a cautionary component to our text for tonight. We mention it because it is part of the text, but, but we always want to be careful. I think sometimes this text is handled and, and this next part becomes kind of the dominant feature and it, and it takes what is a beautiful, beautiful text and it can, and it can cast it in kind of, a, kind of a negative way and we don't want to do that. But we do got to talk about this because Jesus talks about it. When that leper comes back, that one leper comes back to Jesus, it sort of takes Jesus aback a little bit, doesn't it? He's sort of surprised. He said, weren't all ten cleansed? Where, where are the other nine? And he's even surprised because the one who comes back was the one that I suppose if you were a betting person, you would, you would bet that's the one who wasn't going to come back and say thanks because that one was a Samaritan. And Samaritans didn't like Jews, and Jews hated the half-breed Samaritans. And yet here comes this Samaritan praising God, throws himself at Jesus' feet, and, and thanks him and glorifies God. And I suppose the question pops into our heads, why didn't the other nine come back? Didn't they? Weren't they thankful? They would have to be the most callous individuals on the planet not to be thankful. To be healed of leprosy and not to be thankful that Jesus had done that? You know, the fact is, perhaps, perhaps, we'll be careful because the Bible doesn't say this, but perhaps they were very, very grateful for what Jesus had done. But the point is, they didn't come back and say thanks. They were very, very excited and eager to get to the priests and to be declared clean and to go back to living a normal life. I don't begrudge them that excitement or that eagerness. And that can happen with blessings, can't it? Sometimes it can happen that when God gives a blessing, we're very, very eager to enjoy that blessing. And that's okay to enjoy the blessings of God. We do. And that's why God gives them. They are to be enjoyed, right? But as we enjoy the gifts, let's never become so eager just to enjoy them that we forget to return to say thanks. Oh, sure, it takes a little extra time to say thanks, doesn't it? I suppose it took this leper in our text, it, it took him a little bit of extra time. He probably got to the priests later than his buddies did, right? Um, I don't know, did, did he get there 15 minutes later? Did he get there a half an hour later? Was it an hour and five minutes after his buddies got to the priests? I don't know. It, it took a little time to return and, and say thanks to, to Jesus. Did he, did he have to do it? Did he have to return and say thanks to Jesus the way he did? He didn't have to. He wanted to. He was thankful. Saying thanks does take a little extra time, doesn't it? It takes extra time and effort to get ready for a worship service on a Wednesday night, doesn't it? Especially if you got little ones, it can take a lot of extra time to get little ones ready to come to God's house. Sometimes it's, it's, it's harassed and, 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 and hurried time getting things ready, right? And you wonder, am I going to make it? Sure, it takes extra time and extra effort. And my goodness, there's a lot of preparations to be made for tomorrow too, aren't there? Do you have to come to God's house for Thanksgiving? You don't have to. We want to. We want to, don't we? Because Jesus has been so kind and so merciful to us in so many ways, we just have to return to say thanks, don't we? 
Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I would invite you now to open up your bulletins to page number six. And at the top of page six, we're going to join in reading together Martin Luther's explanation of the first article of the Apostles' Creed. And it sort of reviews for us once again the many blessings that our God has given to us. So let's join in that together. I believe that God made me and every creature and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind, and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all that I need to keep my body and life, and by defending me against all danger, and guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise, to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. You may be seated. We have the opportunity now to thank our God with our offerings. And we'd ask at this time, too, that you sign the Friendship Register and pass that along. We continue our service now with the singing of hymn 234, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, the first three stanzas.
Please rise. We join in the responsive prayer for thanksgiving as it is found on page 6 in your bulletin. Lord of heaven and earth, you made all things beautiful. You have provided green forests and refreshing streams. You have arranged the orderly procession of day and night for our work and rest. Thank you for roofs that shelter us, for clothing that protects us, and for food and drink. Thank you for our work, for projects that are done well, and for the approval of supervisors and teachers. Thank you for all who serve at night to make our days more pleasant. Thank you for our Thank you for our cities and our countrysides, for farms and factories, for streets and highways, and for all of life that flows so swiftly before us. Thank you for the morning greetings we receive, and for all the smiles that come from faces loved by you. Hear us now, Lord as we give thanks for personal blessings silently. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ for his coming to us in word and sacraments, for his giving and forgiving, and for listening to our prayers. Receive our gifts and offerings as our sacrifice of praise. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
You may be seated. Once again, a blessed good evening to all of you, and welcome to our visitors tonight. We're glad that you joined us for this special Thanksgiving service. The only announcement I really have tonight, sort of very much in keeping with why we're here, is, a, is a, a, an announcement of thanks. We want to say thank you to those who served, and, and that goes to Nicole Belter, who played the organ for us tonight, and uh, what a special treat that was with special uh, musicians tonight. Nicole had arranged that. Uh, that was her brother, Zach Belter, on the trombone, and Ronnie Dorschner, our own member here on the, on the trumpet today, and a name that did not find its way into our bulletin, for which we are very sorry, was uh, Rhoda Belter. That's Nicole's mother, and uh, the, the offertory tonight was a duet that they played together. So if it sounded like 20 fingers on the piano, you were right, because it was 20 and not just 10. So thank you very, very much for your service. As we, as we go our separate ways this evening, may God bless and keep you and grant you a, a very wonderful and happy Thanksgiving celebration. Mm -hmm. 